you have a interesting spread in um, laid out here and um, let me just give you a little bit of like the the overall energy for this month and then we'll break down some of the themes and unpack some of the things that are coming in for for you through this spread for this month um, first of all when I was shuffling what I'm seeing here is uh, your lonely days are over okay so I, I'm seeing you kind of like being pulled out of your isolation being drawn out of your lair where things are really dark and kind of murky and kind of humid and you're being thrust in an environment where there's a lot more social interaction um, at first it's gonna feel a little bit uncomfortable and as even if you guys are really uncomfortable you never show it so I see a very very placid um, demeanor where you know you act like you're gonna go with the flow but I feel like some of you are very very nervous about getting out there mingling and um, kinda of letting your hair down it, it can feel a little bit uncomfortable okay but I feel it's it's good practice and I feel like it's good for you overall it's good for your emotional health to be around other people to talk a little bit more to interact with people that might be different from you and I also feel many of you are uh, required to do this as a part of your job and then for others there are I'm seeing like speaking engagement and you know how you're invited not so much to to talks but you're invited to attend a talk and then after or before or during break during this talk there's like refreshments and you know reception and people are just standing around just talking I see a lot of that just talking and um, you don't like it you you don't you know it, it doesn't come naturally to you nor would you choose those um, settings to be in but I feel like it's a month where a lot of that is going to be happening and you might as well get used to it and I also feel you're going to start to grow to enjoy it which I feel is really good mingling is good okay it's for fixed sign learning the art of mingling it's really really healthy for you and it's good for you um, what I'm also feeling as well is um, they're saying like home-based contracts and uh, I'm seeing like a, a nest and I'm seeing people kind of like putting the straws and the twigs and the um, everything in place in order to build a nest so it's like people building a nest so I don't know if you're saving up for retirement building like a nest egg or if you are in uh, working with people to build their environment but I see people building a bird's nest which is kind of strange um, maybe nesting tendencies you know um, um, some of you might be dealing with pregnancies or you might be expecting a new child so you're designing or building or painting the nursery or you're baby proofing your home or you are designing for even a friend like um, decorating or designing something for a friend who might be given birth um, so I see a lot of that decorating, uh, building up the nest and, you know, home decor and even fixer upper types of home home base projects like do it yourself projects or even working for other people uh, building their projects. OK. And uh, the last message that I feel here, um, I feel like many of you, let me see here. Um, news and work contracts coming through so if you are working in a very very stable environment I feel like you're being you're being poached you're you're being recruited you're being someone is doing it kind of like under the radar they're like hey don't tell your boss you know come work with us so I, I see that I see uh, you being poached by people that you know you know like like uh, acquaintances or people you've already worked with or people that are in your industry in your field they see what you have to offer and it might be at these you know social events where one thing leads to another you hear a job opening through the grapevines and you get recruited or you get poached or somebody you know asks you do you want to come work with us so lots of networking opportunities are in the picture as well as you know uh, opportunities for you to leave your your work that's very very stable and then discuss and talk to other people about other work and then shifting gears moving into another work situation so I, I do see that coming in as well so aside from that let us talk about 
your spread. Um, first of all, this is always really, really interesting to me whenever I see the luminaries, okay? And like the moon, the sun, and the stars. Because um, when the moon and the sun and the stars, the, their astrological representations show up in a spread, it has a lot to do with divine timing. It has a lot to do with um, everything has to be aligned. The stars have to be aligned you know, the, the astrological transit, whatever it is, it, it needs to be in alignment in order for opportunities to come your way. Now, if you're the type of person that believes that, yes, there is divine timing, there is higher order, there is, you know, Jupiter in your sign, which enhances your ability to attract things. It brings about luck and expansion in business, in prosperity, in financial income as well. So if you believe in those things and you believe that there is a sense of divine timing, they're pretty much saying based on, you know, the, the three luminaries that are showing up that the time is now. And on the other hand, if you are somebody who is a little bit more, you know, fact-based and you don't believe in the sense of divine timing and you do believe that we forge ahead or we create our own destiny, either way, it's basically um, pinpointing the fact that there's something here at work and it can help you if you choose to ride that wave, if you choose to access and tap into that energy. So first of all, the way that I'm looking at this, and this card was on top of the moon. This is somebody who is, uh, you know, been through a lot of crap, okay? So uh, someone who has been through kind of like hell and back. So you've been through situations that really, really tested your patience. It really tested your sanity, and it really tested your ability to carry on. Um, and I feel for many of you, like handling, you know, divorce situations um, where it really corroded your self-esteem and it, it, it corroded your sense of overall trust in the goodness of people. And it was like, you know, be, going through hell and back where the, the, the process was very drawn out, where you had to replay over and over and over again events that you would rather suppress or events that you haven't really thoroughly processed and swept under the rug, and then those events came up for re-examination. And the process can feel very, very uncomfortable because it left you vulnerable and exposed and just defenseless, and you don't like to feel that way. So the past few years, you know, it's it wasn't a walk in the park for many of you. But this is a card about overcoming all of it, triumph and healing and, you know, being able to restore our faith in ourselves. And at this point in your life, because you've been through all of it, you're in a really good path right now. You're healing and you are also uh, able to see kind of like the forest for the trees. You're able to distance yourself from people that are not good for you. And you're able to be a lot more self-reliant, right? In the past, I feel for many of you, you have these emotional responses to people. You put yourself in situations, and I'm not blaming you um, because, you know, you, you guys have a very, very big heart. But this is kind of like putting ourselves in, in dubious company, surrounding ourselves with people that might not be good for us surrounding ourselves with people that might have substance abuse issues, drugs, alcohol, addictions, uh, escapist tendencies, and, you know, people that might even be a little bit um, depressed. I see a lot of emotional fluctuation with this card. Okay. And so what I'm trying to get at is you've been through a lot, and I feel many of you are on the right path here. You have turned to your career as kind of like that driving force to allow you to kind of forge ahead. And you have many of you turned to children as like finding the, the joy and the contentment in your life. And this is also, this combination deals with birth and rebirth. Okay, children, birth and rebirth. It's like finding ourselves, finding love, finding a reason to be through children, finding the joy and the contentment in your life through the children. So... You might have gone through a very, very bitter divorce with this justice card in the reverse position. 
and uh, the children are what's really you know still keeping the the the, the two of you intact, you and the the mother, you and the father, and uh, there's no escaping it. But you're healing from it, so there's still some residual bonds of attachments. And then I feel many of you there might have been you know like um, dealing with a partner who was depressed. And now overcoming it, or you know, you're helping your partner through it, or your partner is coming out of it, and they're okay. Their their lives are you know getting a lot better. They're getting treatment. They are coming out of the state. There's healing. So for those who are going through any uh, dealing with any type of like therapy, there's going to be major breakthroughs for you guys. For those who are dealing with like even physical therapy, like you know uh, rehabilitation. I do see major breakthroughs as well in your health and in your vitality. So this is a good month overall for you to kind of push yourself that extra step to get yourself more physically motivated, more physically fit, and get yourself healed up emotionally and physically. So I do see it being a major breakthrough month for many of you. And so... I also see as well um, one of the reasons in which you're able to achieve, you know, this prosperity and this wealth here um, is the fact that you're no longer looking at a situation. You know, this is kind of like feeling a huge injustice has been done to us, okay? And I'm not going to lie, Scorpios, for many of you, um, whenever, it, it's like you take things very personally and... Um, Whenever it, it, it's like a wrong that's done to you, you dwell and dwell and dwell and dwell on it. And um, you're so emotionally like um, wound up that you feel it's the worst thing in the world. And you feel like what I'm dealing with right now, this injustice, is worse than anybody, uh, anything that anybody's ever dealt with. So the ability to see outside of yourself is, um, is not there. And so coming into this month, I feel like there is a, a, a growth in social awareness, okay? Knowing that, yes, there is an, inju in, an injustice that's done, but in the greater scheme of things, other people are dealing with worse. Yes, this situation sucks, but I'm not going to sit here and mope and whine over it. I'm not going to be, you know, like that woe is me. I'm going to grow from it. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to accept that it happened for a reason, mainly because it's going to teach me something that I needed to learn so that I don't make the same mistake again. So I feel for many of you, this is like a, a, a business deal gone bad. You know, somebody uh, misled you, you fell for it, and then at the end of it, you had to, you know, uh, smarten up and you had to, yes, it sucks. But it's a, a huge stepping stone. It's, it's a huge growth process. And because it happened, now you're able to put yourself in a better situation so that it doesn't happen again. So, yes, there are tremendous opportunities for growth here. And I feel like one of the, the ways in which you guys are able to succeed this month and, you know, progress in leaps and bounds, not just in, in many steps, is this ability to accept that, you know, this happens to everybody. It just doesn't just happen to me. So I can pick myself up and start over. Or I can try to move away from it rather than blaming the situation, rather than saying, woe is me, rather than, you know, dwelling on things. So I feel that's, that's what's going on here, taking ownership of the situation, not allowing us it to kind of limit you or hinder you but becoming a lot stronger and feeling empowered from it. So having explained, you know, the luminaries and how they are activated, because the moon deals heavily with our, um, it's our subconscious, it's our desires as well. It's the things that brings us emotional need, um, how we get our emotional needs met. And the sun deals more with like the tangible things, you know, the, the things that we feel, that makes us feel good, like on a more uh, surface level. And then you also have the stars, which is like where you're meant to be. And the star is signaling as well, you know, if it feels good, go for it. 
if it keeps you bogged down and, and makes you feel heavy and makes you feel doubt and makes you feel like, you know, you can't trust it, don't go for it. So it's very clear cut. You guys have like, you know, a, a very linear, singular path that you need to just embark upon. If it feels good, go for it. Because most likely you're in alignment with your higher self. If something resonates with you, something, you know, just makes you feel alive, it makes you feel carefree and, and, and doesn't bog you down and make you doubt yourself, then go for it. It feels right. Just go for it. Okay. Um, let me talk about some of the other elements that are coming into the picture. So we have this, and this is a very, very good card. I love seeing this card. It's the Six of Wands, and this is kind of like somebody who is in a position of power. They're taking charge, and they have a lot of people that are um, following their lead, okay? So this is a very powerful card that d signifies you are in the public limelight. People are looking up to you for your leadership. They trust you no matter what, no matter what, they trust you. Having this card means that people trust you. They would follow your lead into battle. And this is a card about a victory. So it's a man leading people, you know, from a, a battle. He's coming into town. He's celebrating his win. He's celebrating his victory. And so you've done it before. You have proven yourself over and over and over again that you are capable of it. So people are following your lead. They're not following you blindly. You have a track record of being successful. And for some time for this month, I see a lot of hesitancy on your end a lot of like oh I don't know if I can do this I don't know if I'm good enough I don't know there are so many people depending on me I don't know if I'm gonna let them down so I want you to really think about the concept of we've been here before there was you know an opportunity in the past where I feel like you you felt you could have handled it better but at the same time, there is a victory here, and there are uh, there were opportunities or or situations where you've had to lead people before, and so you have to trust that you have the skills and the intuition and the technical savvy to be able to take care of a situation. Okay, so I feel here there's a lot of trepidation from your end about going back and redoing a tr contract, redoing a negotiation. Um, I'm feeling here with this combination as well. Um, I feel you are also helping somebody negotiate a contract. So, so for those of you, especially in the law profession, um, you might have like a, a brother. Brother, I'm seeing brother, brother-in-law as well and also a love relationship partner so this is a, a Sagittarius an Aries or a Leo it could be their Sun Moon or rising and what I'm feeling is they're they're dealing with some type of uh, trouble and I feel like it's legal trouble um, it might deal with travel it might deal with like you know some legal trouble regarding travel they might need proper papers and documents in order to travel or they're not able to travel. Um, how you know house arrest does come to mind. So, so for somebody with a criminal uh, record, for example, so there's a situation here where somebody is um, needs help with that, and you're called in to help them. You're going to hear it from them, and you're going to offer your services or you're going to offer your help. For those in the legal profession, I see you know you representing people whose move movement, like freedom of movement, is uh, restricted. And then for others of you, this is a relationship partner here with the King of Wands, so Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. This is somebody who is like very um, charismatic. They have great leadership capabilities, but for whatever reason, for this month. Their mobility is limited. They're feeling a little bit frustrated, and coming together might be a little bit challenging. Communication as well is going to be a little bit troublesome between you and them, okay? So be careful about them in the reverse position. Fire signs, when they are restricted or when they are not operating at their best, they can be a little bit, um, um, like, throw tantrums they can throw tantrums and they can be a little bit difficult to deal with okay like obstinate and childlike and just difficult um 
I'm seeing legal issues here with this person. So brother, brother-in-law. Um, it could also be a, a a woman. It's not always, you know, the, the cards are not gender specific. So it could be a sister as well, a sister-in-law. I'm seeing more male energy. And then uh, a partner, a relationship partner, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And I'm also feeling for those of you who are dealing with either a, a Libra or a, um, this is a Pisces, okay? Libra or a Pisces. There are, are situations here regarding give and take in the relationship and regarding as well children, uh, shuttling children around, um, especially if you have like, um, if you have divorced them, a Libran or a uh, Piscean person, if there has been divorce and you share children together, shuttling children back and forth between two different households, changes in custody issues, changes in financial arrangement regarding custody issues as well. And I also feel like, um, lack of consensus and things like that, lack of agreement as to what's fair, what's right, and what's not. Okay, so I, I feel those elements coming in. Um, the last thing that is showing up here, and the, the uh, later part of the month, it looks very, very positive. Okay, it looks just really, really good. And uh, one thing that I would urge you, we have your card coming into the picture here. This is the death card representative of um, transitions, major changes, things from the past that we have left behind that weren't really good for us, that we shouldn't really go back to. Turning a new leaf, starting a new chapter, starting a new path in your life. So you are definitely in alignment for this month in terms of what you want to do, what direction you want to take when it comes to your professional life and your career. And then on top of that, you're at this point where you feel like, for once, very, very independent, very capable of doing things on your own, not needing a partner, not needing another person next to you. This is a card about independence here, seeing our worth and having a sense of vision, okay? And I feel for many of you, you're at a point where you want to increase your skills, you want to increase your technical know-how. So some of you might be thinking about as well, going back to school, returning to school to learn a new craft, returning to school to kind of upgrade your skills, or start a new skill, like uh, start learn a new skill, pick up a new skill that might be a little bit more, make you more competitive or make you more... Um, uh, marketable. And then for some of you, this is um, about working in a some type of an educational institution. Some of you might be shifting away from that. So if you're in academia, you're switching away into private uh, um, enterprises, or even shifting away into, you know, like the public sector. So shifting away from academia into doing something else. So where, whereas in the past you were the bearer of knowledge, sharing knowledge and sharing your skills and having to do a lot of, you know, teaching gigs in the public limelight, you're now moving away from that and you're working more behind the scenes, doing more research possibly, or even uh, shifting away into more of the public sector, okay? Away from universities, away from teaching, away from... Um, the, the disseminator of knowledge. So I see a lot of transitions that are happening for you guys, um, Scorpios. And it's actually funny because um, the sun right now in the month of May, it is, is in the sign of Taurus. And Taurus is your opposite sign. So what it's doing is that it's forming an opposition, a 180 degree angle to your sign, Scorpio. And uh, the energy is very much about, you know, wanting to break out, wanting to do something new, wanting to kind of um, react in a way that we normally don't react to. But I feel like th this jolt in energy is actually going to be good for you, okay? Um, I'm going to shuffle out a few more cards. I want to see what's in store for you for your love life because this is, sorry, this is more like love, I'm sorry, um, career, career and professional life focus. So let me just see what's in store for... Okay, so I have two things here. I have a Pisces and an Aquarius. So Pisces, Aquarius, I see a lot of signs here. Pisces, Aquarius, Leo as well. 
um, you have some people, some very, very solid, dependable people in your life. If you choose to, you know, go the distance with them, I feel like it can work out, okay? So first of all, Piscean person with the moon, Aquarius with the star, Leo here with the sun. And then I have as well a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. And with the Ten of Pentacles, it's sort of like working hard at a relationship, building up wealth, creating that family. And um, many of you, the, the major pressure that you are under right now is how do I not only take care of myself, but how do I take care of my family? How do I take care of my kids? What do I need to do right now? in order to achieve this financial stability so that I'm not, you know, scrambling all the time, I'm not hustling all the time, so that we can afford to have, you know, vac take vacations and not have to worry about making ends meet, so that we have money in the bank, so that we don't have to, I can take like a sick day when my kids are sick. So I feel like you're thinking long term, you're planning your financial future, not only for yourself, but with another person, and you're planning to, you know, build up this family, um, children, and incorporating even grandparents in the picture, and things like that. So you're very serious-minded for this month. Um, I'm feeling as well, let me see here, you're taking the steps, you're definitely taking the steps in order to do that. And I don't feel like you being in financial dire strait for this month, I feel like you're very focused towards building wealth and creating that comfortable, um, you know, that, that image of the, the people building the nest. I feel like it's more your, 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 your nest, your nest egg, your retirement, your, you know, trust funds, your future, um, whatever it is that you can rely on. Oh, okay. Oh, that's very sweet. So let me move this up. Okay, so I have here the Queen of Swords. This is an air sign. Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. This is somebody who's really intelligent. So Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Someone who's very, very intelligent. Um, not the most, you know, not the warmest, most cuddly sign of the uh, Zodiac. But this is somebody who knows exactly what he or she wants. They don't really um, deal with a lot of BS. They're very... Uh, concise when they speak and they know exactly what they want and so when I see this card I usually think of it as you're dealing with somebody who is um, it's like they're trying to figure out what your intentions are for them so uh, it's like I'll show you mine if you show me yours they're keeping their cards close to their chest and they're waiting for you to make the offer they're not the ones that are going to pour out their heart first. They're waiting on you to make the gesture. So with the Ace of Cups, this basically means that you are giving 100% of yourself, of giving to another person. So I feel many of you are dealing with an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, that you're giving your all to with this Ace of Cups. And I feel like for whatever reason, this is a card about financial stability and the balance in the relationship and the give and take. And you kind of need to decide, you know, is this the one? Is this the one that I want to give everything to? Or are you still holding back? And you also, you know, like, do I want to settle down or do I want, I want to play the field? Am I ready yet to settle down or do I want to have, you know, a few more months or years of bachelorhood? Okay, and that's for male or females out there. And overall, with this card, it also signifies how much do I love that person versus how much do they love me? Is the balance in the relationship equivocal or is it off kilter? And notoriously, this card deals with, you know, scattering your time and resources between multiple people. So you have some big questions that you have to ask yourself. Um, I feel for many of you, this is this can be an X, okay? Um, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, possibly somebody you once shared space with, you've introduced to your family, you might have already been uh, once 
you know, like engaged to them or married to them. You know each other's family. You've been introduced to each other's family. So I feel like an, it was an embedded relationship if this is an ex. And I feel like they've moved on and you're trying to rekindle that connection. They've already moved on and they're a little bit suspicious. But I also feel this can also be a present person in your life right now. And you're trying to decide, you know, what to do with this relationship. It seems like... It seems like alone, there's a lot of wealth here, but together, there's diminishing wealth, which is kind of weird, right? But once again, the message is, if it feels right, then it's the right path. If it makes you feel happy and lighthearted and carefree and unjudged and just, you know, childlike, it's probably the right path for you. On the other hand, if it feels heavy, if it feels like a heavy emotional experience, and it feels like, how are we going to make this work? It feels off kilter and unbalanced and just, you know, lopsided. It's probably not the right thing for you. So trust your intuition, Scorpios. And, uh, you know, if it's too complicated, it's not meant to be. All right.